Well, he is risen. He is risen indeed. And I am so thankful that you have tuned into our service today, this wonderful Easter Sunday where we celebrate the resurrection of the Savior. We had church Friday night, um, Good Friday, where we celebrated the death of the Savior for our sins. And on that cross where he was crucified, um, when he was nailed to that cross, he nailed the law, he nailed all of our sins down too. But today is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of the Savior. And not only that, but we have hope in the resurrection as well. Because those of us that are in Christ are going to resurrect someday as well. Now, um, I have a poem that I would like to uh, share with you. And this poem I came across um, a little while ago. Um, this was mixed in with some books that my old pastor had given me when he moved into a, a long-term care home. And so he got rid of a lot of stuff. And I was the recipient of a lot of that stuff. And he's gone on, gone on to be with the Lord now. But um, this was a poem that was written probably 25 years ago by a dear brother, Handy Nevers. And I do not know if Handy is watching this service today. I know he's watched some of our services. But um, Handy, if you're watching, uh, maybe you'll recognize this poem that you wrote many years ago. And it's called Easter Morn. Come now rejoice, it is Easter morn. It is not a time for thee to mourn. For Christ has risen, his victories tell, his triumph over death and hell. Lo, in the manger, see him lay, nestled there among the hay, born to be king of heaven and earth. Yet there he lay in lowly birth. Before Pontius Pilate him stand, a broken reed held in his hand, a crown of thorns upon his brow. He bore it all for us somehow. Come watch him walk up Calvary, and to know it was for you and me. He bore the cross, the nails, the spear, that he might ever bring us near. Behold our king upon a tree, hanging there in agony. "'Twas love, not nails, that held him there, "'our sins and sicknesses to bear. "'Lo, in the grave, now see him lay. "'But as he said on that third day, "'he rose in triumph o'er Satan's power, "'new life to give from that same hour. "'Watch him ascend into the blue, "'away from his disciples' view. "'Go teach all nations,' he did say, I'll come again for you someday. Look for his coming in the sky, and know that the day is drawing nigh, when with a shout he will descend, and take us where there'll be no end. Come now rejoice, tis Easter morn. It is not a time for thee to mourn, for Christ is risen, his victories tell, his triumph over death and hell. What a wonderful thought. What a wonderful thought that is. So we're going to get right into worshiping the Lord this afternoon. And uh, we have a couple of hymns that we want to sing. So we're going to probably spend a little bit more time singing this service than we do most services. But this service is a celebration. This service is a celebration of the risen Savior. Praise the Lord. Let's start out with glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Well, 
I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Well, glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Well, O oh, precious fountain that saves from sin, I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Well, glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Well, come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to his name. We've got another hymn that we'd like to sing. And that is My Savior's Love. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Let's worship the Lord together. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. And I wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Well, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden he prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs but sweat drops of blood for mine. Well how marvelous, how wonderful and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took 
my sins and my sorrows. He made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. Well, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. When the ransomed in glory his face I at last shall see, twill be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. Well, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Yes, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful thought. I want to sing a couple of choruses. And uh, the first one, I think, is, is very appropriate for this occasion and this celebration. And that is Alive, Alive, Alive Forevermore. Well, alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. Well, alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, my Jesus is alive. Praise the Lord. I've got one more uh, little chorus that I'd like to sing. And that is the wonder of wonders. The wonder of wonders. Oh, the wonder of wonders how can it be that god became flesh and was given for me the almighty came down and walked among men oh the wonder of wonders he died for my sin. Oh, the wonder of wonders. How can it be that God became flesh and was given for me? The Almighty came down and walked among men. Oh, the wonder of wonders. He died for my sin. One more time. Oh, the wonder 
of wonders. How can it be that God became flesh and was given for me? The Almighty came down and walked among men. Oh, the wonder of wonders, He died for my sin. Praise the Lord. I've got to sing one more chorus, and that's because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, well, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. Because he lives, because he lives, well, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I Because he lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. Praise the Lord. So we're going to have um, some prayer time as we do in all of our services around this time. And so we're going to pray. We've been praying for my grandmother, and so we're going to pray for her again. I know last week I kind of gave quite a lengthy um, uh, update on what happened with her, but um, she was over this morning. Her and my mother came to visit this morning, and we had a great old talk. And um, she's sounding a lot better. She... Um, her uh, words aren't as slurred, at least that I noticed this morning. And um, she's in really good spirits. She is quite confused, especially when it comes to short-term memory and what somebody's told her. She gets that a little mixed up. But she ha we had a lot of laughs this morning. We had a great visit. and um, She picked up one of the dogs and was holding her. And I took a picture and I printed it out for her. And she was, she was so happy about that picture, just that little thing. And so we're going to continue to pray for her that God's going to continue to do a work in her life. The good news is she's saved. She's a wonderful Christian soldier, and she's um, served the Lord faithfully, I think, if not all of her life, then at least most of her life. And so um, I believe that God is, is going to help her in that situation, and so we're going to pray for her. We're also going to pray again for um, my mother-in-law, Joanne, my wife's mother. And she was in the hospital uh, this week, uh, but she's since been released. And she's had um, a kidney infection, and apparently it's gone to some sepsis. And so she was in the hospital, and she wasn't doing very well. I guess she was unresponsive, and she wasn't eating, and, and she was very out of it. Um, but thankfully, God pulled her out of that, and she is uh, um, in good spirits again. She's alert, and she's, uh, she's talking on the phone, and she's uh, happy. And so God, I believe, pulled her out of some things, and, and uh, I believe that God did uh, perform a little bit of a healing on her, that she was able to recover enough uh, to get out of the hospital. And now, we just need to pray that she will stay out of the hospital. 
And so um, we're just going to pray that God's going to continue to touch and minister to her as well. Um, and I believe that there are some unspoken requests. And I'm sure that we all have some requests within our hearts that we would like prayer for, but maybe don't really want to talk about them publicly. We don't want to make them known. Well, God knows exactly what's going on in your heart. God knows exactly. The Bible says he knows before we even ask or think it. He knows. He knows the, the very hairs on our heads are numbered. And so God knows us more than we know ourselves. God knows what our needs are, but he does want us to uh, come to the throne of grace and ask him. Um, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So God wants you to ask him. But he knows before you even ask him. But again, God communicates with us through his word, and we communicate with God through our prayers. So it's very important, if you're walking in the Spirit and you're serving the Lord to the best of your ability, that you keep that communication open with God. And so we're going to pray for these needs um, this afternoon, and as well as some unspoken needs as well. And I know we all have those. So we're just going to pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we are able to get together and celebrate the resurrection of the Savior. What a wonderful truth that is. What wonderful power there is in that resurrection, that you did not stay dead, but yet that tomb, that stone was rolled away, and you emerged from that tomb, Lord, and rose again. And that we too have hope that we will again, we will be able to be resurrected as well. And we will be given that wonderful glorified body at the rapture. Lord, I want to pray right now for Grammy Elaine. I pray, God, that you will touch and minister to her, that you'll continue to heal her, that you will continue to protect her mind, Lord, that this tumor or whatever it is that's on her uh, brain, we pray, God, that it is benign. We pray, Lord, that uh, it will not grow and it will not continue to impair her thinking and will not continue to impair her life, Lord. Um, and so we just pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will do a work in that situation. Lord, we pray for Joanne as well, and we pray, God, that you will touch and you will minister to her. We pray, Lord, that you will do a work in her life. We thank you. And, and praise you that she was able to get out of the hospital and she became well enough to be able to be discharged from the hospital. And now we just pray, God, that you will keep her out of the hospital, that this infection will be cleared up, that the antibiotics and the, the IV fluids that they've given her, we pray, God, that um, that will all be effective and that it will all do uh, what it was intended to do, Lord. And we pray, God, that this infection will stay away. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to pray, God, for the remainder of this service, the truth that I'm about to declare, Lord. I pray that you will give me the boldness and the courage to be able to preach it with anointing and with your favor, Lord. And I pray for everybody watching on Facebook Live or on YouTube. I pray, God, that you will touch and you will minister to them the word of the Lord and that they will be changed and transformed by the power of of God. We pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And so it doesn't matter what denomination you are, it doesn't really matter what church you're in, you're probably going to all get the same message this morning or this afternoon or today, whenever you have your church. Um, and any pastor that doesn't preach about the resurrection and the risen Christ is not doing their job right. Easter Sunday is when we, when we um, celebrate the resurrection of the Savior. And so for a few moments this afternoon, with the help of the Lord, I want to preach on the idea of the risen Christ. And our text is going to be in the book of 1 Corinthians in the 15th chapter. And I know as you're turning there, you're probably thinking, Pastor, that's your favorite verse. That's your favorite passage of Scripture. That's the gospel that God gave to Paul. And absolutely, the gospel that God gave to Paul is included in this Scripture. But we're going to read past that as well. And we're going to continue. And we're going to read things that we don't normally read. And so we're going to read verses 1 to 8. Normally, I just read verses 1 to 4. But today, we're going to continue past and go to verse 8. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 
to 8. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, in which also ye are saved, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory of what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, how that Jesus, or sorry, but I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. And after that he was seen above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remaineth unto this present. But some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James and then all of the disciples. And last he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. That contains the gospel of Paul. This is the gospel that God revealed to Paul. And if you know anything about me, you know that I love to preach that. You know that I love to declare the gospel. You know that I believe that our whole salvation depends upon the truth that we just read. And so we are saved through this gospel. But I want to look past that. And I want to go down to verse 5. And I want to look at a couple more verses here. 5 to 8 that we don't normally read. And so verse 5 says this, And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Now Cephas is Peter. Anytime you see Cephas uh, in uh, Scripture, it's talking about the Apostle Peter. And so Peter saw Jesus after he rose again. And then was seen of the twelve. And so there were twelve people that were with Peter that saw the risen Christ. So the risen Christ was seen of Peter and then of the twelve that were with him. Let's read verse 6. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. And so the risen Christ was seen of more than 500 people at one time. Now this was written about A.D. 57. And so some of these people that saw that were still alive when Paul wrote this. But some of them, it says, um, were fallen asleep, which means they died. Some of them have passed on. But more than 500 people saw Jesus ascend. But it doesn't stop there. Verse 7 says, After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. So now all the apostles saw him rise. Because Peter already saw him rise. The 12 people that were hanging around Peter saw him rise. 500 people saw him rise. And now James and the other apostles saw the risen Christ. And verse 8 and last of all, he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. So the total, if you add all of that up, the risen Christ, the resurrected Christ, was seen of more than 525 people. Now, I don't watch a lot of TV. In fact, I don't really watch TV at all. But I remember when I used to watch TV, and any time you saw a, a law enforcement uh, program or something dealing with courts, they often gave a lot of credibility to eyewitnesses. And so there was a lot of uh, eyewitnesses that you'll see in a court drama. And um, when you have two or three witnesses, eyewitnesses to something, and they testify something, that is a great deal of evidence. If one or two eyewitnesses test in, testify in court, that is strong evidence of guilt. If you've got, if you're in court and you have two or three people that have testified that you did a certain thing, the judge or the jury they're going to really take that to count, and they're really going to 
uh, put a lot of weight to that eyewitness testimony. But now what about over 500 people? We read in this passage of Scripture that the risen Christ was seen of more than 525 people. Now imagine being in court. Imagine a court uh, trial where 525 people testify to seeing and witnessing something. That's a lot of witnesses. That's a lot of evidence. That's a lot of, of weight that's going to be put on that evidence. That's almost undeniable truth. If you have 525 people that have said, that's what I saw, how can you even argue it? How can you even uh, test it? How can you even uh, deny it? 525 people saw Jesus after he resurrected. But now in verse 8 it says, uh, And last of all, he was seen of me also, and this is Paul writing, as one born out of due time. Now what does this mean? One born out of due time. Well, you see, in order to be an apostle, there are certain prerequisites certain qualifications that you need to be that need to be met in order for you to be called an apostle. I'm sorry to tell you but there are no apostles today. I know that there's some preachers out there that claim that they are apostles and they have and they actually take the title apostle so and so. Well, you look really good for being 2000 years old if that's the case. No, we don't have any apostles today. Paul here was the last Apostle, and he said he was one born out of due time. So, so Paul saw Jesus Christ after he had died. And we're going to go to the book of Acts. The book of Acts today. We're going to go to Acts chapter 9. We're going to actually look at this appearing. To Paul. Acts chapter 9, verses 3 to 9. Acts 9, verses 3 to 9. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now remember, Paul was a little notorious at that time. Um, in fact, he was called Saul. If you go to verse 4, it says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Paul, while he was Saul before his name was changed to Paul, he was a murderer. He was a persecutor of the church. He was a Pharisee that actually um, were one of the people that were responsible for the death of Jesus Christ. And so when Jesus comes and says, why are you persecuting me? That's because he was one of the ones responsible for the death of Christ on the cross. And not only that, but after that, he did horrible things to Christians. He killed Christians just because they worshipped Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ appeared to him and said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Paul had a life-changing experience on the road to Damascus. Let's keep reading, verse 6. And trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. 
And Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight. And neither did he eat nor drink. So the risen Christ appeared to Paul. The risen Christ appeared and asked Paul, Why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting my church? He was so shaken that he lost his sight for three days. That he didn't eat or that he didn't drink for three days. What a life-changing experience he had. He went from being Saul, persecutor of the Christians, to the Apostle Paul, who wrote half the New Testament where we get our doctrines today. You think God can't save you? You think God can't forgive you? You think God cannot deliver you from your sins and your sinful lifestyle? I'm here to tell you today, if God can transform Paul and turn him into an apostle... God can save you. There's nothing God can't forgive. There's no sin too great for God to forgive. There's no sin too great for God's blood, the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross, that can't be covered and washed away by that blood. We're going to leave it there today what's our time no, almost 240 <clears throat> better close it there because I want to sing one more song and I want to sing victory in Jesus and this is a song that um, we sing sometimes here and I do really really love this song and believe it or not through the resurrection we have victory in Jesus and so we're going to sing Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning. And I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And 
and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the privilege that we have to gather together here on Facebook Live and on YouTube to be able to hear your truth, to be able to sing your praises, Lord. And we're so thankful for that resurrection. What a wonderful testimony to the power of God. We also are looking forward to that we have hope in that resurrection and that we will too be resurrected and be given a glorified body at the rapture. This is something that I pray that we never lose sight of. And I pray, Lord, that everybody that's watched this video, Lord, that you will touch and you will minister to each one of those people. Lord, we pray, God, that you will do a life-changing work in their lives. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will just bless each one of us, Lord, and be with us uh, as we go about our week. And we pray, God, that we will be able to come back together again next week for service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's celebrate the risen Christ. You know, I mentioned before, and I'll mention again, we have a hope in that resurrection. Because Jesus, when he rose, he had a glorified body. He was able to walk through walls. He was able to appear and disappear. And, and I believe that that glorified body that he had is going to be a pattern for what glorified body we're going to be given when we get raptured out of here and we get changed. Our corruptible body is going to be made incorruptible. And so I just pray that you have a good week, that you'll keep studying the Word of God because that's how God communicates with us. And I pray that you'll just continue to pray and talk to the Lord and pour your heart out to Him because that's how we talk to God. And keep that communication open between you and God. And so until next time, God bless you. Don't forget our Bible study Wednesday night. Uh, we're going to finish up Romans chapter 4. And so um, I hope you have a good week. And until next time, God bless.